Hello and welcome to Chinese Health Regimen. Health and longevity have always been an aspiration of mankind, especially now that our living standards have gone up tremendously. So how do we live longer? In this episode, we'll show you exactly how. Yangsheng or health preservation is commonly known as Bao Jian or maintaining the health. As we all know, Qigong has long been in existence in the Chinese history and it is a form of health preservation. It helps to maintain our health through restoring the body's well-being and posture or Tiaoshen, readjusting our respiratory system or Tiaoxi and realigning our mental and spiritual well-being or Tiaoxin. In the last season, we have shared with you the various benefits that health-preserving Qigong could bring and today we'll give you more insight into yet another type of Qigong called Medical Qigong. So what is Medical Qigong? In fact, it's a combination of traditional Chinese medicinal techniques as well as the practice of Qigong, both combining with the objective of healing. This is achieved through much practice of the art of Qigong. What then is the relationship between Qigong and traditional Chinese medicine? The connection between Qigong and traditional Chinese medicine lies in the fact that both possess the same foundation according to the five elements of yin and yang, that is metal, wood, water, fire and earth, and aims at improving a person's health or well-being. The development of medical Qigong has a long history dating back to ancient times, and in the classical medical journal of TCM, called Huang Di Neijing, there are records of the principles of medical Qigong as well as clinical studies on the advantages of this form of exercise. The earliest known medical Qigong exercise is believed to be the Wu Qin Si from a famous physician of the Han Dynasty, Hua Tuo. The application of medical Qigong has grown through several thousands of years of development. In fact, its treatment techniques of contraindication and efficacy have been developed to such a state where it makes it a whole complete wholesome treatment. It is now a rising trend and has received wide positive response. In fact, throughout the ages of ancient China, all the medical physicians were well proficient in this art. Medical Qigong is good for treating chronic diseases, for example, restoring the body's blood pressure and curing the sugar imbalance. It can be subdivided into certain categories. The foundation of medical Qigong, for example, Jing Gong, Mei Yang Gong, and in particular, Han Yang Rui Gong, combines theories and elements from traditional Chinese medicinal techniques to restore the body's yin and yang equilibrium and reduce discomfort and pain in patients. It is easy to learn and the techniques are effective in revitalizing the body and relieving ailments. Today I have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Tan here, uh, Sifu Tan, who is actually a practitioner in Qigong. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So uh, my first question, how did you actually get to know about this Qigong? Well, I've been practicing Qigong for quite some time, almost 30 years. But initially I practice like most other people do, just practice for general health purposes and so on. After about 11 years in uh, that area, just by chance, I get to know uh, medical Qigong. Mm. It all started with well, a friend of mine who had uh, throat cancer and uh, he met a grandmaster in Beijing who treated his uh, cancer just in three treatments. Mm. So I heard about it. I leave everything aside, fly to Beijing. Then very fortunately, I managed to locate him. And uh, more fortunate, he accepted me as his student. Mm. That's how I get to know medical Qigong. How long were you his student for? Uh, when I met him, I remember when he first saw me, he said, Hey, look, why you can't look for me? You able to uh, treat somebody? Huh? Are you practicing Qigong? I said, yeah, more than 10 years. And uh, he said, okay, what you need to do is just to know the techniques of how to do it. Mm. And I spent about uh, just a short period of time with him to pick out the treatment techniques. Oh, I see. So um, this, I've heard there's medical Qigong and normal Qigong. Uh, yes. What are the differences? Okay, in normal Qigong, the objective is uh, to practice Qigong for general health purposes. But as medical Qigong, besides that, you're able to uh, use your energy to help somebody to overcome their health challenges. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, if you're to practice medical Qigong, in addition to uh, all those knowledge that you have, 
you have to understand the, how a body functions. For example, the anatomy of the body and the energy anatomy, the channels, the meridians and so on. So there's more than one type of medical Qigong, is that correct? Medical Qigong in general is referring to cell healing as well as treating somebody, telepathy part of it. In medical Qigong, we classify it into three different types. First of all, a Qigong master uses his own energy to treat someone. Mm -hmm. That's the first category. The second category, the Qigong master, besides using his own energy, he can tap energy around him mm -hmm. to help him to uh, help the patient. Mm -hmm. And the third category, besides that, uh, not only his own internal energy, tapping energy, he also activates the flow of the patient's energy. So uh, if, from that aspect, you can see that medical Qigong have three different categories. Mm. So the Qi is not within our body, it's energy is everywhere. Yeah, is correct. the universe is consists of a lot of energy. Mm. Uh, if we know how to tap this energy, it can help us to enhance our energy level in the body as well. Oh, I see. So who can actually practice medical Qigong? Is well, basically any healthy person can practice. But there are certain basic criteria. Number one, you have to be self-disciplined because a lot of uh, regular practices that you have to go through mm -hmm. to be able to reach a level that you can help people. You must have also uh, a love of helping others. Yeah. <laughs> so these are two very basic uh, Very important. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, from a local perspective, is yes. medical Qigong uh, widely accepted in Malaysia? Are there any centers, other centers that you're aware of? Well, in Malaysia, Qigong in general is very, very accepted. If you walk to any park, you can see the groups of people practicing Qigong all over the place. But uh, they, many of them, just like what I went through initially, do not understand the medical therapy part of the uh, art. Mm. Yeah? So I would say that they actually practice for health purposes, for general purposes. Mm. Well, if it's really true medical Qigong, they are just a handful of masters in this country that they practice at. However, they don't teach. Mm, I see. So, um, can you just share with us some personal experiences or even testimonials from your patients? Okay, uh, I remember when I first started practicing Qigong almost 30 years back, uh, I have very bad sinus. It run in the family. Yeah. <laughs> and after three months of practicing Qigong, my sinus completely gone. Oh, okay. yeah, that was the self-healing part. Mm. Yeah. And then later on, we picked out the art of treating others. Uh, initially, I was not a professional healer. I just helped friends as and when uh, that uh, they need help. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember my first patient is a, a very good friend of mine who had a uh, stomach upset in Thailand because mm -hmm. of uh, spicy food. He's an Aussie. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, uh, he was just too much on the uh, spicy Thai spicy, food. Yeah. And the next day he had brown. And within minutes, actually helped him to overcome the problem. And yes. that minutes, wow. literally minutes, you know? yeah. and that really uh, gave me a lot of confidence. The power of uh, how the use can treat others, and eventually when I become professional, I help different type of patients ranging from stroke, cancer, even some of them with DNA related problems.